welcome. Try to talk a little louder. I have to put the phone further away so I can encompass uh, all of this read here. So, thank you for joining me. I've had a lot of light sensitivity lately, guys. Um, chuck it all up to Ascension symptoms now. Been interesting. <laughs> and it seems a little better at the moment, you know, um, last week, man, um, uh, was tough. So, what I'm looking at here really is all the major arcana, and we're arranging these, pre-arranging these, really, okay, and I, by the transit, so it's a transit to transit read, and maybe look to it also, then we have each sign uh, that the planets are in. And right now, one of the things that stands out, if you just look at the transit chart anyway, you have a really strong, bold chart right now. Um, you know, that goes from Sagittarius um, and now ends with Cancer. <laughs> Where my moon is Sagittarius Sun for me. Um, cancer Moon. So today, with this reading, uh, it's at 27 degrees, the Sun, I believe, so... Mine's at 25. So, that's, of course, the galactic center. We've had the, um, gone through the um, eclipse. It was just last night. Uh, I missed it exactly. I fell asleep. That's how boring my life is. My girlfriend reminded me this morning. She said, you said we were going to go up and see the moon at 11.30. But she said, I don't want to wake you up. So I said, tonight. I'm going to be close. So we go on tonight. But yeah, the full moon, this is a big energy. It's not just any way, like right this moment. It's not a razor. Um, um, so as we follow the planets, we're starting with Mars, and, which is the tower. And then um, we have the sun, which is the sun. That's an easy one. Now these are both in Sagittarius right now. So remember, that's kind of uh, leading up this, or ending up this bowl. What's cutting is the moon, right? For like the next week until it hits Sagittarius again, uh, the moon, um, it's really going to be blazing the way um, through these signs that are not in this bowl, that are not in the transit energy with planets in them, you know, which are Leo, Virgo, uh, Libras, um, Scorpios, Geminis. Your just, sun just left you though just today you know, uh, and Aries. So it's, uh, of course it do, it does affect you and they all have a meaning to you. Um, even if you're one of those signs and you don't have plants in them, this just shows where kind of energy is going to be most concentrated. Um, and we see here to keep them in order, but I just think when you look at them in terms of the tarot cards, we just look at a three card reading with the tower in the past in the sun in temperance um you know that's telling a story about uh, a trans difficult transformation that is leading to a long-term success and stability you know um really uh, positive energy to start with coming out of the shoot um, <clears throat> and then when you see over here next you've got mercury after the sun now and that's in capricorn now and you have, of course, Pluto and Venus now. They're just conjunct here in Pluto. And that is in the signs ruled by the devil card, Capricorn. So it really kind of uh, paints a picture then. You know, uh, when you I always think of Mars now, the tower, and Mercury. I mean, as an astrologer, they're the ones that are going to trigger. A lot of times be a trigger for all the other big stuff that you see. But you see here with the magician kind of stirring things up, we kind of all know what Pluto and Venus is, and that's well represented by the de devil here. So it could be very intense energies, guys, coming in with this um, devil card, um, kind of showing you by, by way of tarot what kind of, like I say, many people probably know, uh, Pluto judgment. Um, interesting that that's the Pluto card, no? Um, and, of course, the empress. So it just shows you also how ill put the uh, Pluto and Venus is. So um, with Mercury coming in, 
um, we'll do the personal reading. I'll, I'll pull like some um, court. And what I'm going to do, I have, I'll pull one court card and then we'll pull uh, a minor arcana, which represent, you know, us, our more personal ego stuff. Literally, this is the sky. I know the things in the sky. And we'll look at how they relate to you. I mean, this is a uh, sun and the full moon, two degrees off of my sun. That's, of course, very important. 25 degrees uh, Capricorn, hugely important, all the way through Christmas. Merry Christmas to us. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, maybe it's uh, not exactly Santa Claus there uh, who uh, visits at Christmas. But although, I mean, honestly, this could be any like Christmas family holiday. No? <laughs> kind of a lot of the energy that goes on is kind of toxic shadows stuff underneath was people get hammered at Christmas dinner and and it starts now and then moving into Aquarius you have the world which is uh, in Saturn and Jupiter uh, so we have a fortune and in the signs represented by the star Aquarius so you know um, it kind of this optimism too and it's interesting to me you just kind of look at all that together it's kind of optimistic and even though that has the fool, the Sagittarius energy, it's starting with the fool, and it ends so well to me um, that it's very positive. And this is very positive, too, here, um, with Jupiter delivering hopes and dreams and wishes, and also the star card being the card of hopes and dreams and wishes. And now you have Saturn, the world, and Saturn's moving forward. I, got the, I know Saturn pretty well, unfortunately. <laughs> Or fortunately, I say unfortunately my soul is like, good job. <laughs> Me, it's like, oh, dear God, I wish that never happened. But, um, so, you know, I think Saturn's uh, willing to play nice now, honestly. Uh, a lot of good karma coming in and stuff. Judgment, what's going on with Pluto and Venus. But it really doesn't matter which one's which here. They're on top of each other here um, until... You know, Venus, even, I think, <clears throat> even when Venus retrogrades more and gets off directly Pluto, it's all Pluto being synergy the whole time until she comes back and clears Pluto sometime in our next lifetime. No, it's like March. So, um, that's, that's just very intense. But there's like a nice bridge here, too, over this energy, this, Cap, uh, this Capricorn energy. Uh, between the Sag and the Aquarius, um, which, <clears throat> you know, any Sag and Aquarius, whether it's Sun, Venus, it's the Venus woman's to the man's Mars, the most relevant, or, the, you know, the man's Mars to the woman's Venus, this is the one that counts the most. You want to pick an aspect, <clears throat> as well as the Sun and everything, really, but, you know, um, so these are uh, usually a good match, you know, fire to air. And so, of course, there's sextile. Um, then next you have Neptune, you know, one of my personal favorite in the seventh house for me, being a Virgo rising. I want to get more into the houses. Um, I'm working on that. I figure out how to best do that. I think we're just going to have to do uh, when I bring in a sign. It's going to have to be by rising sign and I'll throw up a rising sign calculator. Um, not that hard if you have your time. So the hangman is. Um, going to be Neptune here and the moon uh, represents uh, Pisces so this really hit the mark for me you know all the imagination here all of the romance here and this to me brings out this part of the moon that it's less about like hidden dangers or anything and just about uh, being in a dream world that Neptunian dream world uh, with the hanged man too, um, which I always see the hanged man more than um, looking at things from a different perspective. I like the hanged man for just taking a time out. And this is like, literally to me, this is like daydreaming here. Um, and I think for me anyway, I can definitely feel this as net, as we have uh, Neptune going direct right now. Right, as Ju uh, Venus goes uh, retrograde, no, uh, that has to count. Um, it's going to be a, a lot of this energy of this daydreaminess and foggy. This could be uh, foggy thinking 
this kind of thing. <laughs> yep. Um, so a lot of this could start to clear up, but, you know, kind of can come in as being a little bit harsh, you know. Um, sorry. Hey, get up on the can. I don't want it to keep blowing out. It's just then it becomes a bummer. Oh, yeah, a lot of bummer, man. Right. So we move over here to Taurus, and uh, we have the hair plant for Taurus. And Uranus is the fool. Um, it's quite like a, a mixture when you put these two together here. Um, of course, for seven years together, but then you'll have to, we'll see how things work around them. Um, and it's my ninth house for me, so it's been a very interesting kind of period for me. Um, but, man, um, that's bringing in some changes that are very deep, you know. Um, I, I have to go here, like, collectively. I know everybody does a collective thing. I like to do more personal. But, you know, this is disclosure. Could be, like, alien disclosure right here. That's what I see right there. Yeah, the fool. Uh, yeah, and the hair font. It's like the priests, like, reveal what's behind the real power behind the oracle. Uh, it comes out with the fool energy. Um, and in our lives, it could be that way. Um, it, the transformation of belief systems is not possible with the hair font. So now with the moon and cancer, we also have, I think, like a really nice pairing because the high priestess and the moon go together like really well. That's just kind of like a yummy combination right there uh, to me. And, um, you know, the higher self and the chariot here, uh, to me, always represents an aligning with the higher path, you know. Uh, I think it was kind of whoosh, kind of stepping into that flow of our life's purpose here um, with this cancer energy. Uh, so the big ones are Uranus here in the full, really, as square Saturn. I mean, that's the big one of the whole year. So we always got to look at where that is, like 10 degrees Saturn now. Uh, Uranus at uh, 12 or 11 maybe now and it's just like it's the only thing going backwards in the sky um, and that's just for me it's playing out in uh, my sixth and uh, my ninth house to my ninth house it's it's really just kind of obvious for me uh, it's it's a bit of a struggle um, you know, so it's about daily routine and practices and um, also um, belief systems and um, higher values here. Um, and then with the moon, I think moving into cancer, and I have a cancer moon, uh, but could throw like a, a lot more emotional perspective over everything. And I think especially with this Venus uh, energy and Pluto, um, it could kind of uh, bring up the emotional energy in this a little out of the Pluto uh, Scorpio energy and a little more towards the Cancer, meaning maybe more caring kind of energy about it. You also have that sextile Jupiter and Sun, which I think is like super powerful uh, influence. I mean, those are the biggest planets, right, around the uh, Sun, Jupiter. Um, and so they're really like a one degree. And it's... Uh, uh, it's kind of like productive fires let's do it uh, fixed airs like here's how and getting it out there and doing it you know um, and it kind of is uh, I don't want to say it's skipping over this Venus um, Pluto you know people freak out over this one and it, it could be a pretty intense one but um, you know it's going to be over in a few months it's not like a you know, I have Pluto opposite the moon, and that just goes on for, I don't know, years, decades, I think. I can't remember when it, it started. It's been like forever, it seems like. Um, they could just be so slow. I mean, Uranus could be like that, too. I mean, Karen, God forbid. Yeah. So, let me know, guys, uh, what you think of this. Uh, would you, as we go along, if you can add anything to it, um, comments help the channels. I appreciate any comments that you might give. And my idea now um, was to kind of um, go uh, by sign here. Now, right now, we have uh, half exactly so we have strong a bold 
this concentration of energy, wherever that is in your chart. I mean, for sure, that's where your concentration is. You might see it. The first and second quadrant, self, learning, um, getting situated, understanding the world, the, you know, the third and fourth, you know, practice, belief systems, uh, interacting with the world, that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> let me look at my minor con here. What's going on with Sagittarius, Ace of Pentacles? So, with the Ace of Pentacles, it shows our personal energy here. Whoever's watching this, if you want to resonate, um, this is uh, this tower come down, but you know we're really making an investment here uh, into something else, um, and that might be what all this energy in Capricorn is about. Because when you get out of the muckety muck of the Pluto Scorpio sort of vibe with this, you know Capricorn really is the goat. It's really about climbing. It's really about building. And so the Ace of Pentacles really likes uh, that devil uh, for that reason, okay? Mars is uh, exalted there. Aces are kind of always Mars energy. Um, but it's bringing all of this Earth energy right to this um, here of temperance, fire, and the sun, fire, Sag, and you could say Leo energy too. Uh, with the sun in the fifth house energy anyway. And so it's like, it could be just like really excited and you know, but when you bring this ace of pentacles, it's like, no, this is, you're not playing. This is not the practice, you're not playing. This is the game, you're down, you're serious for this stuff right here. And in Capricorn, well, it's very appropriate, seven of pentacles. So probably this whole transit and this Mercury goes along here again. He's a trigger. We could watch that. Uh, Mercury today is at 9 degrees Capricorn. If I can read that right, yeah. So um, uh, just off of my Saturn. So I felt that in a couple of days. Um, but by a trigger, I mean it's moving fast. And as it significantly aspects your personal plants, wherever they may be, look for that to be like the day. If somebody says, well... I'm going to get the job offer on this day. Mercury's going to pull that trigger to what day? And the tower represented here, representing Mars, is another big trigger, okay? But Seven of Pentacles is really evaluating nuts and bolts. Pentacles, man, being really solid here. This your reading. Um, with this, you're putting everything into this. You're not playing. This is uh, for real to you. You're in it to win it. You're in it for a long run but you're taking a hard assessment. And that is no better way to come at this Scorpio energy. Like, don't let it scare us and just go like, hmm, let's see what I got here. Let me count up what I got. What's in the plus and minus for me right now going on? Um, that's, I like that for that energy. Um, let's see, as we move on to the Aquarius energy. And the Ten of Wands, you know, I'd say it's, uh, it's cliche, but it's about letting go. That's a, it's a lot of energy been pouring in Saturn and Jupiter. These are the two outer planets of old before there were outer planets. These are the biggies, you know, the souls enter through uh, Saturn. Uh, Jupiter, Zeus, the king of gods, the largest planet. Um, and here we are in the, the, with the star, Aquarius, hopes and dreams and wishes. And I think it's basically, this is going to be us letting this down. Because if you're going to take up your hopes and dreams and wishes, you have to let down all these uh, uh, actions um, and uh, burdens, really. So this would be all these things are kind of unproductive that we're having to do. Now, we're looking at Neptune here and Pisces. Wow. In the Nine of Pentacles, this is an amazing progression. From the Ace of Pentacles, the Seven of Pentacles, now the Nine of Pentacles. So look, guys, I'm going to tell you how this is going to work out. Uh, you're going to go along here, and you're going to have to really put down something. I even know what this is for me. I'm in the process now. And um, But when you do, like you're going to realize that this is kind of what this uh, is bringing in for you here. Um, this reality check as, you know, um, Neptune goes direct. Um, you're okay. You're solid. 
you know, so this is your someone saw it. You didn't like uh, mess around and you're not coming out of this with this really difficult energy. With Nine of Pentacles, like you're for Minor Arcana, I mean, that's just about as good as it gets, you know. Um, whole, individually whole, capable to take care of yourself, uh, happy, content even. And speaking of happy and content, this is amazing during this energy here with the Six of Cups. And remember, you have the hair font there because it represents Taurus. Um, this could be the energy where um, some kind of uh, offer comes in for you or some kind of interaction with someone that you believe is from the past. Could be a friend, could be a lover type of energy, but it would be definitely something emotional. I mean, just look at this card. be something like that, you know, where you're like, wow, and really doing really good about it. And... Um, Uranus is the kind of thing where it's something, you know, you bump into them at the grocery store or something like that um, kind of energy. Um, you meet them at a party you didn't know you are both going to or this kind of thing. Um, and the moon and cancer, like I said, this is just good energy. So it's interesting that the high priestess um, being the moon uh, in, uh, in the chariot is cancer. They really go together well, I think, however you shape that out. Um, it's, the, it's very feminine energy all around. Uh, when I say divine feminine. And so it's just casting over like the whole reading. Because see, this is at the front of the bowl. The front of the bowl is what slices through life. If you have a natal bowl, it can be a really important item of interpretation. And just how it's set up and the, where it's at. And everything like kind of like this. Uh, so it's an interesting example right now. So the moon's going to be moving ahead, being the flat, by far fastest planet. So it'll be changing uh, every day, and um, then we'll change also the um, uh, how we um, pull tarot cards for this. So the seven of swords. And this is not the lion cheating and stealing seven of swords. This goes with your nine, uh, seven of pinnacles over here in the Capricorn energy. So this is in your cancer energy. Um, so it's got you really thinking strategically here at the end of this. Maybe uh, the cancer moon's a little triggery. This seven of swords is looking right at the uh, six of cups. So... It could be someone in your life who's an air sign. It could be you because it's your own mind, thoughts, air, kind of questioning the veracity, the authenticity, the reality of this connection that you perceive you have. I'm not saying you don't. I don't really mean to say perceive. This connection you have is being questioned some here. And this would kind of be an odd feeling because it's, uh, it's in all of this emotion of cancer in the moon um but it's coming in like it's a thought like uh it could be like i have these all the time i don't like i'm mentally ill but just neg weird negative thoughts that pop up but if you sort of catch it you go oh i think that's about like yeah i'm insecure about whatever um why that popped up or i'm concerned about that happening and it's something like that like you might just catch yourself with a thought uh, about this um, soulmate situation that you perceive as a soulmate situation. But, you know, you're so well placed for this. I just have to say, like, you probably deserve it. So, um, it, um, the moon will be out of cancer and, um, very soon. And it'll be moving on uh, into Leo, where it's a lot more cheerful. Um, and it'll probably be like, uh, no problem. Nine of Cups on the bottom of the deck. Uh, I'll go ahead and take that. Uh, and that just goes, you know, what you had here with your Nine of Pentacles. So, uh, over here. So, you know, being emotionally in, in you know, happy, self-contained, uh, and, and uh, even financially, possibly, you know. Really solid here. Um, great energy. So thank you guys. Let me know what you like of this, what you think of this. Um, you know, leave a comment. Appreciate it. Any uh, thing you might have to say um, about uh, whether you like the new reading or not. Yeah, I think I might try to do this as a daily reading. 
Um, and kind of be interesting to see too. I think the cards so give us such an interesting perspective on the actual astrology. And it, for me, way to really fuse the astrology um, with the cards, and then we can just do more and more astrology too. So it used to be great to watch if you know your rising sign, especially as we go along. Thank you guys.